the experiment is frequency response of common emitter amplifier. We are going to design a common emitter amplifier using voltage divider biasing for the given specification and conduct frequency response analysis. So this is the design specification given, the voltage gain of 100, the supply voltage VCC of 12 volt, the collector current IC equal to 4 milliamps, operating frequency of 100 hertz and HFE equal to 100. So these are the components required. So we will require a NPN transistor BC547BP, resistors, capacitors and AC voltage source of 100 millivolt or 0.1 volt P, DC voltage source of 12 volt and oscilloscope to measure the output signal. So this is the common emitter uh, amplifier configuration circuit diagram. So basically the common emitter uh, amplifier uh, uses a uh, transistor. Here we are using an NPN uh, transistor. The input signal is given to the base of the transistor. Output signal is measured at the collector terminal and uh, the emitter terminal is grounded. So that's why it's a uh, common emitter configuration. And uh, we know that the resistors R1 and R2 are for biasing. So based on the voltage divider biasing. And uh, this is the collector resistance at the load. And uh, RE is the emitter resistance. So basically emitter resistance is for the stability of the Q point or the operating point. So the CE is the emitter bypass capacitor which is connected in parallel in order to uh, improve the gain of the circuit. And it will uh, bypass unwanted uh, AC signals to the ground and to improve the overall gain of the circuit. And uh, C1 and C2 are the coupling capacitors. So for blocking the DC component and it will allow only the AC component. Since uh, we are giving both uh, input AC and uh, DC signals, the C1 and C2 are going to block the DC component and it will amplify only, it will allow only useful AC signal and amplify the AC information and output signal will be measured at the coupling capacitor 2. So here we have connected the oscilloscope to uh, measure the input and the output waveforms. So channel A is connected to the input signal, channel B is connected to the output signal. So let us uh, look at the design of the common emitter amplifier for the uh, specification. So this is the model graph uh, which shows the input and the output waveform. So the input waveform uh, is a small signal and output waveform is the amplified version of the input signal. So this is the frequency response to be observed for the common emitter amplifier. So which is uh, plotted between the voltage gain and the frequency in the x axis. So here we can observe uh, due to the effects of the capacitance the trend of the graph is like this which is like uh, almost like a bandpass filter response. So the gain will fall at low frequency and high frequency due to the effects of the capacitance. The gain uh, falls in the low frequency due to the coupling capacitor and the emitter bypass capacitor and the gain falls in the high frequency region due to the internal uh, capacitance C pi and C mu and in the mid band the gain is constant. So here we can measure the cutoff frequencies uh, FH and FL uh, by drawing a 3 decibel line below the maximum gain in the mid band so which denotes the upper cutoff and the lower cutoff frequency. The difference between the upper and the lower cutoff frequency will determine the bandwidth of the uh, amplifier. So the maximum gain is in the midband region. So the gain and the bandwidth, the product can be just taken as the product of the gain and the bandwidth of the amplifier. So this is the design. So here the supply voltage here chosen is 12 volt and we have the collector resistance and the emitter resistance. So here the total supply can be divided across this collector resistance and between the collector to emitter and from emitter to ground. So we can choose 50% of the supply uh, for VCE since the Q point uh, should be chosen at the middle of the DC load line. So for maximum amplification and undistorted output, let us fix the 50% of the VCC for the collector to emitter voltage and 40% of the supply for the collector resistance and remaining 10% of the VCC for the emitter resistance. So based on this we can calculate what is the drop at the collector and between collector to emitter and at the emitter resistance. So knowing the voltage drop we can calculate the collector resistance and the emitter resistance. So we already know that the current that is flowing across this resistance RC which is IC it is given in the specification which is 4 milliamps and we can approximate IC equal to IE and we can calculate RC the collector resistance as VRC by IC 
and the emitter resistance as VRE by IE. So we have now calculated the collector resistance and the emitter resistance. So now we are supposed to calculate the resistance R1 and R2 for the voltage divider bias network. So for calculating R1 and R2, so first let us find what is the voltage drop at the resistor R2. So sum of the voltage drop across resistor R1 and R2 will be equal to the total supply VCC. So here the voltage drop across the resistor R2 can be found as the base emitter voltage VBE plus the drop across the emitter resistance. So here the VBE is 0.7 for silica and based on this we can find the voltage drop across the resistor R1 as VCC minus VR2. So knowing the voltage drop and the current that is flowing across this resistor R1 and R2, we can find uh, the values of R1 and R2. So before we find the resistor values R1 and R2, first we can calculate what is the base current knowing the collector current and the collect gain. So here HFE value is given in the specification and the collector current is known. So from this we can calculate what is the base current. So base current. So from this we can approximately take as a rule of thumb the total current from the VCC is across R1 as 10 times of the base current. So which is divided 9 times across R2 and 1 times across the input base. So here uh, we are going to approximate 10 times of the base current across the resistor R1 and 9 times across the uh, resistor R2. So generally the current through the voltage divider R1 and R2 is comparatively higher than the base current in order to avoid the loading of the base current on the resistor R1 and R2. So we are approximating 9 times of the base current across resistor R2 and 10 times of the base current across the resistor R1. And these resistors R1 and R2 are chosen based on the required value of the base current IB. And after we calculate R1 and R2, we can find what is the overall base current, base resistance which is R1 parallel R2. So knowing the base resistance, we can calculate the input coupling capacitor which is 1 by 2 pi f into the base resistance. So we can approximately take the coupling capacitors on the input and the output side C1 and C2 to be equal. Next is to find the bypass capacitor CE. So we can approximate the bypass capacitor reactance as 1 by 10th of the emitter resistance. So based on this calculation the bypass capacitor is calculated as 10 by 2 pi f into Re. So once uh, based on the design calculations we have calculated the values of all the resistors and the capacitors. Uh, the collector resistance is 1.2 kilo ohms, emitter resistance is 300 ohms, R1 is 25 kilo ohms, R2 is 5.3 kilo ohms, C1 and C2 are point 0.3 microfarad and emitter bypass capacitance CE it is 53 microfarad and VCC is 12 volt. So we are applying a 100 millivolt small signal input at the input of the base and we are going to observe the output at the collector terminal after the coupling capacitor C2. Now the output is observed by using an oscilloscope. So we are we have connected channel A the input signal channel B the output signal. So this is the Bode plotter where we can observe the frequency response of the common emitter amplifier using the Bode plotter response. So this is the procedure. Set the amplitude of the input signal to the required voltage. We have set around 100 millivolt. Vary the frequency from 100 hertz to 1 megahertz and note down the corresponding output voltage. Tablet the readings and calculate the gain using the gain expression which is 20 log V0 by v, uh, Vi which is calculated in decibel. Plot the frequency response characteristic in the similar graph sheet. Find the bandwidth and the gain. So this is the table where we are tabulating the readings for a wider frequency ranges. So we start from 100 hertz low frequency range, gradually increase in the midband region and end up with a high frequency range till 30 megahertz. So note down the output voltage and calculate the gain in decibel. Finally from the response we can calculate the midband gain bandwidth of the amplifier and the gain bandwidth product. So now let us uh, look at the simulation of the common emitter amplifier. So we have connected the BC547 transistor, the resistor R1, R2, RC, RE, coupling capacitor CE, C1 and C2 as per the design 
and applied an input signal of 100 millivolt. So now let us uh, run the circuit and observe the oscilloscope. So here we can observe the input and the output waveforms. So we can uh, adjust the scale of the channel A and channel B as per the requirement. So we have given an input signal scale of 100 millivolt, output signal scale of 5 volts in order to accommodate the waveform in the oscilloscope screen. So I can now measure the waveform input and output waveforms, amplitude of the input and output waveforms and check whether the signal is getting amplified. My input signal peak is 98 millivolt, it is close to 100 millivolt is my input signal. My output signal is around 5 volt. So generally common emitter amplifier is going to have a 180 degree phase shift. So the output signal is inverted. The channel B output shows 5.2 volt is the amplified output. So we can verify that the signal is getting amplified through the common emitter amplifier. So either we can determine the frequency response by varying the frequency range and measuring the output voltage in the numerical scale calculate the gain in the decibel or we can observe the frequency response using a Bode plotter. So this is the response observed through the Bode plotter. So we have given the horizontal scale from 5 hertz range to 10 gigahertz range and vertical scale the gain from 0 to 50 decibel. So we can vary the cursor over the graph response and see how the gain is varying for different frequency ranges and tabulate the readings in the frequency response. From the response we can calculate the upper and the lower cutoff frequencies, the midband gain and the gain bandwidth product from the frequency response observed through the Bode plotter.